Hi, I'm Jen Hind, and I'm a student minister here at Chilean United Church. Do you ever notice that sometimes we receive a lot of praise for um, remaining somewhat stoic and keeping our inner life, our inner emotional life, um, tucked down nice and, uh, you know, nice and neatly and not really um, expressing ourselves when we're experiencing troubled times or experiencing grief or you know we have a lot going on in our life a lot of people will say oh you know look at so-and-so they um, um, you know they're they're handling things with so much um, you know stoic and and without protest and without lament and and these types of things and I always thought that was kind of um, interesting because when I look at the chat, if we look at chapter eight in the book of Jeremiah, for example, Jeremiah is very much expressing his emotional world when he speaks about my grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Um, my, I mourn for the, the hurt of my poor people. He goes into this huge chapter eight, um, verse 18, um, he goes through this huge discourse about uh, his inner anguish and grief. Um, and we also learn about this exa example of um, outward lament from Jesus. When Jesus wept, Jesus often wept over the city of Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus wept in the city of, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, sorry, when the night of his betrayal. Um, but what's also very incredibly interesting if we go back to chapter eight in the book of Jeremiah, we learn as well something incredibly compelling that it isn't just Jeremiah that's weeping uh, for the people of Israel who are ultimately uh, be being exiled. We learn that God is weeping as well. And what we can also learn from the book of Jeremiah is that Jeremiah from time to time actually exemplifies um, the embodiment of the emotionality of God in physical form. Um, and so this is really interesting. We learn in this chapter that God is weeping for his daughter, Israel, um, who's ultimately being exiled. We learn that Jeremiah is weeping for uh, a people that are um, his people that are ultimately being exiled and what he perceives for himself as a failed ministry. So we learn that God and Jeremiah are weeping together. We can also this carry this forward and look to the ways that Jesus points us to um, va validates our uh, the expression of our outward emotion uh, when when we learn of the different ways that Jesus wept. So what does this mean? So on one hand, we have society today that um, commends us for being uh, stoic and without protest. And then we look to the Bible and we see all of these examples, including the book of Lamentations, which was also written by Jeremiah. We have all of these examples of scripture that are encouraging our emotional life. Um, so when I looked at that, I thought that was a really interesting um, uh, correlation. Uh, and I know in my own life, uh, when I've experienced some of my greatest darkness and my greatest pain, um, when I lost my dad in 2010, and when my stepfather died suddenly as well, um, I know that what has helped me the most um, is when I was actually able to acknowledge the pain, the abandonment, and the resentment that I was feeling inside. And so I was very much comforted uh, when I turned to scripture and I see all of this, saw all this way that uh, the, um, the notion of um, outward expression of our emotions is validated. And so um, in that line of thinking, um, you know, I, I kind of had to chuckle actually and think to myself, well, where did we get this, um, where did we get this uh, notion that remaining stoic and keeping things under wraps um, and, and um, you know, not, com not having any sort of protest about the things that are happening in our life was the way to go. Um, I tend to think from my own experience that when I, um, when I validated that emotion, when I expressed it outwardly in, um, in, in a safe place um, and toward God uh, was, the, um, was the point I was, I was trying to get to there, when I 
expressed my emotion and took my emotion toward God, not only was I being validated by scripture, um, but I was solidifying my relationship with God. See, I think a lot of times we're afraid to take our emotional life, especially when it's negative, toward God because we, for some reason, feel that we're not supposed to direct negativity uh, toward others or toward God. Um, but I tend to disagree because when I experienced my negative emotions toward God, not only did I found myself validated in Scripture, I found that um, uh, my relationship with God was being solidified. See, when we become silent, um, then, you know, we, and we're afraid that our negative emotions, that we're supposed to keep them in and not take them to God, we're fracturing our relationship because we're becoming silent and we're not letting God into our emotional life any, anymore. So what I found was that I was actually blocking God off. And so as, as psych psychology would teach us as well, um, w in which psychology would call narrative therapy, when we, um, ex when we get into our internal emotionality, um, we're validating our emotions, we're creating space, um, and uh, we're um, freeing ourselves from, an, from that which binds us um, inside. And so when we take this emotional world to God, instead of becoming silent, we're maintaining our relational contact. And so those are some very valid um, and comforting points that I learned uh, through my times of grief, is that number one, um, my, my, my inner emotional life was not a sign of weakness. Expressing it was not a sign of weakness. It is validated over and over again uh, in scripture. And not only is it validated by uh, Jeremiah, by Jesus, but it's validated by God. And so if it's validated by God, that means I can take that emotional life to God. And when I take that emotional life to God, I'm remaining in relational contact with God rather than becoming silent. I believe that God would rather hear our protest, hear our pain, than not hear from us at all. As Psalm 30, as we learn in Psalm 30, it, weeping may last through the night, but it is ultimately joy that comes in the morning. And it is that that I leave you with. Amen.